hello everyone welcome to bill coding and today we are going to look at uh, bubble sort in c programming so first of all let's try to understand what bubble sort is so as clearly written on the picture bubble sort is a type of sorting algorithm in which two adjacent elements are compared and the one with the bigger value is swapped to the bigger index for example if we look at what is happening here it says start with the first element and compare it with the adjacent element so now here is our first element at index zero you know it's an array so it is zero one two three and four so we take the element at index zero which is eight and compare with the element at index one which is five so now when you compare the value of eight is bigger than the value of five hence it will swap it becomes five eight the elements have been swapped we continue with the process and we take the index 1 and index 2 elements here the element at index 1 which is 8 is bigger than that at index number 2 so they are going to swap the process continues we have 8 and 6 8 is still bigger so it's going to swap the process continues 8 and 12 but in this case 8 is not bigger than 12 8 is less than 12 so it is not going to swap it maintains their positions and the process starts back from a fresh five compares and it and so on until everything is swapped in the array so that's a simple picture of bubble sorting and that's what we are going to try implementing now so now i'm going to use sublime text to write the edited code before we run using dev c okay so i can start my c program hash include standard input output header then uh, int main to start my main function okay we can write our code lines here so now what do we need in this program we will need an integer i for iteration with j we will need the size of number of elements in our array what we also need is the swap that we are going to use in swapping and we are going to need our array to hold the values let's assume that there are 50 values maximum so now first thing we're gonna do is to ask the user for the size of the array because that's gonna be a big guide to us to working with iteration so you can say print f enter the size or let's say enter the number of elements okay now we give the user the opportunity to enter the elements the number of elements so we're gonna have a percentage d since it's an integer and then we say ampersand and we are storing it in n so now the user has entered it the next thing we are gonna do is to try asking the user to get in the values like that's our target first of all to have the values stored in our array so we can now say print f um, uh, enter the elements okay now we are trying to get many elements it's not just one element so using scan f directly here will mean we are just taking one element so since there are many elements we are going to use a loop we loop through a set of uh, values before we get it so now we can say for let's say i equal to zero looping through i less than n and then we can say i plus plus okay what we have simply done here is we are taking from the zero value to n minus one value so if our n here is five for example we are going to have five values taken so now we can now say scan f um, uh, the values we are taking are still integers so we use percentage g and now our name of array and i now let me explain this line in this line it takes a value for i equal to zero it takes a value for array at index zero now after taking it since the loop is still less than i is still zero and now we have to work on c as long as i is less than n after taking at i equal to 0, we have taken the element at index 0, we increment it to 1, i now is 1, 1 is still less than n, we still take the second value for i equal to 1, we increment i, i is now 2, which is still less than n, remember our n is 5. So we keep taking the values until we have i equal to 5, 
which is not going to work because 5 is not less than 5. So this will take values from i to i equal to 0 to i equal to 4. That's what this loop does and it takes those values and stores them in their respective indices. So now we have taken the values. Next thing we are now supposed to do, we can go now directly and perform our sorting operation. So now, let's say um, uh, let's say for because loop uh, sorting we require a lot of looping. So we say for i equal to zero, i less than n, and then we say i plus plus. Within it, we are also going to loop j. Let's say j equal to zero, and then now j starts. J goes right to um, uh, less than, let's say, N minus I minus 1. Yeah. And then uh, we have J plus plus. Now, what is the condition? Let's say if array element at index of J is greater than that at J plus 1. This is a very powerful condition in our code. Now let's see how it works. We said j is greater than j plus 1. If we come back to our algorithm here, you see that now let's take this case. This let's say assume this is j. Automatically this j plus 1 because let's say this is a 0, this is 1, this is the same as 0 plus 1. So if array at j is greater than that at j plus 1, we swap that's what happens here because this is like j and this j plus one since j was greater than j plus one we swapped so we are now going to perform our sorting operation here so we can now start by saying swap is equal to let's say that at j the value at j and then we can say the value at j is equal to the value at j plus one remember to end your lines with semicolons and then we can now say value at j plus 1 is equal to swap okay you might be worried here how it works but this is simply just going to exchange their values like swapping their values we first said swap was array value at j and then now we assign it to be that at j plus 1 and j plus 1 that are swap that's going to interchange the values so where we had 8 and 5 is going to change it to 5 and 8 that's what these three lines of code does so now this is the entire uh, function where this program lies because this is where the swapping occurs so the next thing we are now going to do it has been swapped the values has been swapped what we have to do now is just printing it out to see how it appears and now we are working in uh, ascending order so now we can see print f the sorted values in ascending order okay and now you know there are many values so we have to look through we can say for i equal to zero i less than n i plus plus we can now say um, uh, let's say we are trying to print these values and this percentage g since they are integer values and um, they belong to array i okay cool i think it's okay because it's going to print our array values okay let's copy the code and work with it let's see working on dev c plus plus okay Let's start a new project. We paste it here. Okay. Now we have to save it first before we run. Let's just say bubble sort. Bubble sort. I remember to save it using a file extension. C. Okay. Let's try compiling it to see if we have errors. And they say here we have an error because there's no semicolon here. Always remember, please. You see, expected semicolon before these braces, but there was no semicolon. So always remember to end your lines with a semicolon. 
all right successfully compile let's run and see if there is any error so now let's say enter the number of elements let's say we have three elements the access to enter the elements let's enter it okay and it worked so perfectly so now we have entered our elements two three one and the sorted values are one two three let's take another set of values let's run it all right let's take like five elements just enter any random numbers and you can see that it has been sorted three four five seven eight okay so dear viewers that's how we sort elements using google sort you can get a copy of the code and i'm going to also paste it on the comment section stay tuned for more interesting videos thank you bye bye